Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Drone user successfully challenges Newton, Massachusetts ordinance. AUVSI's win comments on Singer decision. And MSU uses UAS to take aerial picks during football game. Hi, I'm Brie Cross. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI. The legal system continues to recraft the potential regulatory landscape for UAS in a rush to try to control something they likely don't understand very well. The city of Newton, Massachusetts passed a law last December that banned drone flights below 400 feet over private and public property without the consent of the landowner and required local registration. Now, though that law has been overturned by a federal judge in Massachusetts, thanks to the efforts of a physician and inventor living in Newton, Dr. Michael Singer, who is also an FAA certified drone pilot. Singer challenged four sections of the local ordinance representing himself. He said that the city's ordinance was moot because, quote, it attempts to regulate an almost exclusively federal area of law. Federal District Judge William G. Young agreed with Singer. Young wrote, quote, Congress has given the FAA the responsibility of regulating the use of airspace for aircraft navigation and to protect individuals and property on the ground and has specifically directed the FAA to integrate drones into the national airspace. The decision is not likely to have any specific impact on any law other than Newton's, though a number of municipalities have been waiting for the outcome of this case before making their own regulatory decisions. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. On August 30th, General Atomics Aeronautical Systems flew its first test flight out of its new flight test and training center facility in Grand Forks, North Dakota. The GA ASI Block 5 Predator BMQ-9 remotely piloted aircraft flew a round trip of approximately 1,075 nautical miles. This was the longest transit flown by a remotely piloted aircraft in Class A civilian airspace under a certificate of waiver or authorization granted by the FAA. Wyvern has partnered with the Women in Drones organization to offer its exact UAS certification assessments to its members at a discounted rate. EXACT is an acronym for excellence through assessment, continuous monitoring, and training. Women and drone members will receive a 10% discount on EXACT UAS certification assessments, which focus on applying aviation best practices to drone operations. An automated drone delivery system has been unveiled by a Menlo Park, California company, which will soon begin providing fully automated, on-demand transportation of pathology and blood samples between hospitals in Switzerland. The Matternet station is integrated with Matternet's autonomous M2 drone and Matternet's cloud platform to provide an intuitive user interface for sending and receiving packages through Matternet. Measure, a U.S. provider of drone services for enterprise customers, has announced its first franchise location with the September 25th grand opening of Measure Springfield in Illinois. The new office provides local, face-to-face -face service for businesses in central Illinois that are interested in using aerial data collection to improve productivity, control costs, and increase workplace safety. AeroVironment has delivered M1, M2, and 5 compatible Raven and Puma AE UAS to two DoD customers with more orders and deliveries scheduled. In addition, the company will begin taking orders in December 2017 for M1, M2, M5 configured WASP AE micro air vehicles for delivery in spring 2018. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. AUVSI has issued a statement on this week's ruling in a Massachusetts drone case federal court decision that reaffirmed the FAA's jurisdiction of the national airspace and confirmed much of the current industry thought on the issue of preemption. AUVSI's President and CEO Brian Wynn commented on the decision by the U.S. District Court for the District of Massachusetts in favor of the plaintiff Michael S. Singer. AUVSI also joined the Consumer Technology Association in submitting an amicus brief on behalf of Dr. Singer and his lawsuit against the city ordinance. 
which restricted UAS operations. Quote, we are pleased the court reaffirmed the Federal Aviation Administration's regulatory authority over the national airspace. Proposals that seek to regulate the use of unmanned aircraft systems at a local or state level have the potential to create a complicated patchwork of laws that may erode rather than enhance safety. Ensuring the uniformity and predictability of U.S. aviation rules is vital to expanding the use of UAS as government and industry work collaboratively to integrate UAS into the national airspace system. A UAS was used to take aerial photos of the college football game between Mississippi State University and Louisiana State University last week. The MSU RASPIT Flight Research Laboratory, which leads FAA and the Department of Homeland Security UAS research, led this mission only the second of its kind to receive FAA approval. Quote, while the operation was not particularly complex, the FAA authorization to perform the flight was extremely unique explained Raspit Center graduate research assistant Madison Dixon. Because there are flight restrictions above major sporting events, the FAA had to approve this flight beforehand. MSU's administration also had to approve it as well. For this flight, which took three months to plan and received FAA approval on September 12th, a licensed UAS pilot was required to be in command, along with trained observers and safety officers. During the flight, the aircraft was restricted from flying over the stands. Overall, Dixon says that the mission went off without a hitch. Quote, the mission was absolutely accomplished safely, smoothly, and to the satisfaction of all involved. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week. <laughs>